Hey, 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 I'm Chris. I'm Drew. We are Cheap Ashes coming to you today from beautiful Chandler, Arizona and Yard Cigar Bar. Yeah, as usual. As usual. Um, beautiful Sunday morning here in Arizona. You know, woke up, it was in the mid 40s, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was like 50 when I got up, I think. So. And then, like, right now, it's probably 55, 56 degrees. It'd be, yeah. You know, we were looking yesterday, and one of my customers was in, and he's from New England, and he was showing me pictures that people have sent him. And I'm like, you know, I'll take four months of literal hell heat to not have to deal with that shit. Yeah. Ever. Again. Absolutely. You know, you're from snow, snow yeah. country. You know, growing up, I remember as a kid having to shovel freaking driveways at six in the morning so my grandma could go to work, you know? Yep. Before you went to school. Before I went to school. Yeah. She'd make me breakfast, but fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was 10. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, um, I, I feel for you guys and, the, you know, it, you lost power and you're struggling with that kind of stuff. I feel for you. Wish you nothing but the best, but I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what are we smoking today, Drew? Oh, let's see here. So we... <coughs> going with the Charter Oak Broadleaf. Um, Yummy. Out of Foundation Cigars. Uh, great little cigar here. Uh, I believe it is the number one uh, what value. Number one. Uh, cigar Aficionado's number one value cigar. Rated 93, yeah. you guys. Yeah. I mean, a 93 for a value cigar that was you know, under seven bucks. Yeah. I mean, I remember when they first came out, right around that $5 price were, point. So. But... But here's here's what's crazy about it. People look at that and s- kind of snub their nose at it because it's only a five dollars, six dollars yeah. stick. And um, hopefully through our platform here, we're bringing you quality and good taste. Doesn't have to be expensive. Yeah, it really doesn't. This is one of my favorite cigars in our humidor to smoke, just because one the value on it exceptional yeah but it's a really good cigar and nick malillo knows what the hell he's doing when it comes to making cigars yeah i mean you can look at that it's kind of hard to see with the the color in here but uh nice beautiful silky brown wrapper so and and you know what his cigar band on it is simple yet elegant yeah you know it's got the oak tree with all the roots and stuff that you can see Really, really great job that he did it. And it comes in wooden boxes. They're not cardboard. Yeah. You know, um, simple though. Super <coughs> simple. Uh, what, five different sizes? Yeah, I believe T so. Corona, Rothschild, Lonsdale, Toro, and then the Grande, which is six by 60. Today we're smoking the Toro, five by 52. And this is a perfect size stick for me. Yeah, absolutely. This, I mean, this is kind of a go-to. This is probably the most popular size of... Mm-hmm. Any cigar on the market, hands down. Um, you could literally just carry the Toro in a line and, and get away with it more than likely. You know, we try to, here we're more likely to carry a uh, Robusto Toro, you mm-hmm. know, two sizes, and we do just fine with it. Yeah. You know, you don't need to carry 30 different sizes of right. a freaking stick. I mean, come on. <clears throat> you don't need to be a Perdomo. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways. Who? Yeah. <laughs> Um, wrapper, Connecticut Broadleaf, uh, Binder, Nicaraguan Habano, and then the filler is all Nicaraguan. So it's got a good kick to the cigar. Yeah. It, medium, medium full. Yeah, I put it in the broad medium, leaf. medium range. Um, it does have that subtle spice note from the Habano. Uh, you can definitely taste it uh, on the finish. Uh, up front, though, it's got that nice, that real rich, earthy, kind of subtle, sweet, almost like chocolatey coffee note yeah, to it. Yeah, absolutely. That little bit of spice. So it does taste like a really good cup of coffee. Um, you Speaking know. of which, yeah. what kind of coffee you got today? Um, so, I don't know, even know if this thing has a marking on it. No, it doesn't, but I'll show you my cup. Um, the grind time. We've we've done this one before. I did the espresso before. Um, so I'm drinking time. the cold brew. Um, he's got some just regular black drip coffee. Which is fantastic. Yeah, I just wanted to give him another shot. Um, well, I mean, they were great the first time. I just... I was on my way this morning. I was like, you know what? I actually was having a craving for their coffee. So, you know, I went ahead and, uh, it's it's crazy when you go back yeah. to something, and we talk about this all the time with my customers. Yeah. And 
it's always nice to smoke and drink what you like and what you're comfortable with, but then you kind of change it up a little bit. And that's yeah. what I'm doing today with what I'm drinking. There you go. San Diego Besties. It's a collaboration from Belching Beaver and Coronado. Interesting. Two San Diego area breweries. Um, it's in, called a Neapolitan Imperial Milk Stout. And what they wanted to do with it, let me try and get, get it out of the light there. They talk about taking it back to simpler times when you were a kid, Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah. You know, sure. that strawberry chocolate vanilla. I'll, I'll never forget my grandma, my Italian grandmother, always had Neapolitan ice cream. I don't mm -hmm. know what it was. She always had that in the yeah. freezer. And she would, she would always say, Christopher, what flavor do you want? And I always went to the strawberry. Yeah. I don't know what it was about strawberry ice cream that just was great. Well, nobody ever had strawberry ice cream by itself. Right, it was, right. Always, it was always in Neapolitan, so yeah. you had to figure out, oh. But then when you go, you know, it always came in those rectangular bricks. Bricks, yeah. You, you know, that you had to open. So she would scoop through all three and get it. And you're just like, well, let me try this and see. And I don't know if you did it as a kid, but you would let it warm up a little bit and mix it and get it oh, soft yeah. and then you have squirrels. all three of them in there yeah. and you're just like holy shit that's good you know you forget about that stuff and this is kind of takes you back to that kingdom that yeah. i talk about all the time and you can see it man that thing is super dark rich um the nose oh fuck you can smell the neapolitan on the nose mm -hmm. you, it smells like neapolitan ice cream <laughs> to me and and again I like to talk with people all the time about something that takes you back to a period in your life where you tend to not remember all the time. Yeah. This brought me back to remembering my grandmother and grandfather's house. Yeah. As a kid, sitting at her kitchen table, having a bowl of Neapolitan ice cream. Well, there you go. And that was, it, it's just like, oh, memories, feels mm -hmm. great. But it, it's a great beer, it's eight and a half percent. You know, anybody that knows Belching Beaver knows they're putting out some badass shit right now. You know, the Deftones line of IPAs that they've been putting yep. out. Um, they got the, uh, what, what's the other one we did? Um, no Worries. No Worries, yeah. No Worries we, we've done. I, I have always been a supporter of these guys. They've treated me well when I've met them. Mm -hmm. You know, when they re-released in Arizona, I met them. They were great people. You know, it's, it's just... It, it, it's a good company with good people, and you just want to support. Yeah, you know absolutely. we we are, we carry it all the time here. I know Big Sticks has it. Yeah, you know all the other bars around Arizona that I've been to, especially cigar bars, yeah. carry their product. Yeah, well, I mean they have a great team behind them as well. They're direct rep, uh, their distributor, everybody. Yeah, uh, everybody's doing a great job out there. So they're just fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, this cigar. Tell us a little bit about Foundation and how they started and you know i know you don't want to get into nick's whole story but just it it's yeah. kind of a, a he, it's a good guy that really made it yeah and the thing about um uh, nick is uh, he's such a down-to-earth dude um he's from connecticut uh you would not know that he was from connecticut <laughs> other than the fact that he talks like he's from Connecticut. Yeah, exactly, uh, his, that's what it is. His accent kind of has that like New York, Connecticut side um, accent to him. Um, but he kind of fell into uh, cigar. the cigar industry. Uh, ended up in Nicaragua, and uh, that's part of the long story there. So we'll just kind of cut to that. But he ends up uh, at Drew Estate and uh, working through Drew Estate for pretty much the entirety uh, of when Drew Estate started. Uh, moving through. Um, it was part of the big projects like uh, Liga Pravada and some other ones. Um, so then uh, when Drew Estates and uh, got purchased by Swisher uh, International, um, kind of decided he was going to take his talents and, and go do his own thing. And he actually brought it back to the original stuff. Um, so like your tabernacle is like the original Liga. The, the tabernacle, which we, I mean, maybe we'll review it on here. It's, a, it's an expensive yeah. stick. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's not expensive per se right but it's out of our price range so maybe pre-wedding yeah it's a 13 14 dollar cigar pre-wedding so, yeah. yeah so it's not bad you know and then uh they did the um upsetters line which is 
uh, direct correlation to like an acid, uh, but that's going back to the original using the Jamaican silver tongue leaf and right. the actual herbal infusion, not the synthetic blend that originally uh, wasn't part of acid that they developed later. Um, so it's kind of bringing back a lot of the original stuff that he had a big hand in. Um, well, plus, this, this cigar itself was a tribute to his grandfather. Yeah. So who used to smoke nothing but Connecticut broadleaf. Right. And I mean, this is, you know, true Connecticut broadleaf. <coughs> It's not, you know, some random, like, we're going to grow it here in the corner of this Honduran tobacco field and then call, call it, it Connecticut Broadly. Call it Connecticut Broadly. <laughs> so, I mean, he's doing it right. Um, you know, and then he's got some other stuff, uh, like the Wawense and the Wise Man Maduro, uh, which are actually uh, producing the Aganorsa factory. So, I mean, I totally forgot about the Wise Man. Yeah. Oh, so, those shit. those cigars are uh, probably my favorite just because I'm an Aganorsa whore. But, Dude, yeah. Aganorsa, it, it's... Dude, it's hard, man, not to yeah. like Aganorsa. Yeah, and I mean they're they're definitely one of the best uh, as far as like uh, tobacco growers. I know you know they're behind like Placencia and some of those bigger guys. Uh, but is, they, they produce. Quite isn't a this bit. coming out of the AJ factory, AJ Fernandez? Um, I don't remember exactly. Uh, there's so much anymore, and honestly, lately I've just been kind of enjoying uh, the cigar life as opposed to uh, knowing uh, everything about it. You so. know what? Isn't it a lot better? Oh yeah. yeah. You know, that's what fucking Google's for. <coughs> yeah, I mean, honestly. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You know, that's what it's for. But, um, yeah, it, I I totally kind of, in my own, it's my own fault, just spaced the cigar. Yeah. And literally, I was working yesterday. I'm like, what do I want? What do I want? I'm like, oh, I'm going to do a broad leaf. Yeah. You know, why not? Let, let me give it a shot. It was my first cigar of the day, like just like today. And on a clean palate... There are so many cool flavors that come yeah. through on this. Really, well, really. Um, you know, I think for us here, it's six, uh, 640 a stick. Yeah. You know, there's 640 a stick, I think. Um, so under $7 a stick for this quality well, is the, fantastic. The thing I realized this morning, too, is I haven't smoked one of these in like a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also did not smoke a cigar yesterday at all for whatever reason. Um, just you went to, hiking. Yeah, I went hiking, did all this other stuff. Just <laughs> like, didn't smoke. So this is literally a, a fresh palate this morning and the flavors that were coming off of this thing. Um, just so rich and so earthy. Like I said, that kind of subtle you know that, sweet. That little, you know. And that subtle spice that's coming off. Yeah, of the habano. So, I mean, yeah. that's definitely a, a, a great cigar. I totally forgot about them, honestly. Uh, when they first came out, I was smoking so many cigars a day that it washed out a lot of the flavors on it. Yeah, um, for this few guy. years yeah, ago. Absolutely. So I was just, I was like, yeah, it's a great, you know, budget cigar. But it's not a budget cigar. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It, it's, it far outperformed its price point. Yeah. I mean, there are cigars that are 10 to $12 that this thing is. Dog rockets compared to this. Completely better. Like in every aspect. <laughs> so. All right. So final call on the stick. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, if you can find them, uh, the smaller ones or the Rothschild size uh, tend to be in that five dollar price point. These are more in that six dollar range. I think the so. Petit Corona is going to be in there too. Yeah, Petit Corona. Uh, I'm sure the Longsdale is probably closer to the Toro. Closer uh, to Toro. And the Grande is probably going to be about seven, seven fifty somewhere. Give around or take. There. I mean, it just kind of depends where you're at too. Um, the thing about these is you can find them all over the place. Yeah, so. and we're lucky. We don't have a high. Tobacco tax in yeah. Arizona compared to a lot of so other even states. So even with you know even with the the states that have a high tax, I mean, you're looking at you know you, might be, eight spend, bucks. you might be spending eight bucks on this. Totally yeah. worth eight bucks. I mean, yeah. California's probably nine, but totally worth it. it anything worth it. under ten bucks, this cigar's worth it. Yeah, your coffee, absolutely. You know, grind time. It's a great yeah. coffee house. Um, yeah. The you know the flavor profile in that coffee. It's always smooth. It's never bitter. Yeah. Not high acidic. If you haven't watched it, go back and check our other uh, uh, video we were talking about grind time. I went into a yeah. little bit more detail. Drank the espresso. You know all these different things. So good stuff. And yeah. for me, absolutely on this guy, I'll do it again. Out of my comfort zone. I'm an IPA IPA guy. Yeah. Um, Mexican lager kind of guy. Uh, having this this morning really uh, tastes delicious. And I will always support Belching Beaver just because they make quality stuff. So there you go. So good show today with with uh, with the cigars and pairings. I feel yeah. like I feel like this cigar pairs well with both the stouts yeah. and the coffees and yeah. stuff. So um, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to 
like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, uh, cheap underscore ashes, and then stay tuned. We have some fun stuff coming up. Some fun stuff, and you guys have a great week. Thank you for watching. Catch you next week.